Good evening. We're back with more Marvel Champions. This evening will be a deck analysis and buying guide as part of our Star Lord Hero Spotlight. Take a look at the leadership deck used in his gameplay video. Talk about what the most important cards are and what substitutions can be made in order to make the deck. It is an expensive deck. If all you have is the core set, this deck would cost $195 to make because it involves two expansion boxes and seven hero packs. In the galaxies, or in the, in the Guardians of the Galaxy cycle, the Guardians were spread out across the full cycle. So in order to get all the Guardian allies, Groot and Rocket Raccoon come from Galaxy's Most Wanted. Drax comes from the Gamora hero pack, and Gamora comes from the Drax hero pack, and then the discount card, Welcome Aboard, comes from the Venom hero pack, and that was probably done intentionally. Which of these are essential? Well, if you wanted to play a budget Star-Lord leadership deck, I would just get the Drax hero pack. As I discussed in the Nebula deck spotlight, I would consider Gamora the only really strong Guardian ally. The others are nice to have. Not necessarily essential though, but Gamora is really strong, and I would consider her an important part of any Guardian's deck. Welcome aboard is decent, but you can easily swap in Power of Leadership. Power of Leadership will be worse because it only works on leadership allies and not any ally. But it could also work on Rapid Response, so it's not a lot worse. I don't know that it's necessarily worth picking up the Venom Hero Pack just for Power of, or for Welcome Aboard alone. And you've got the standard leadership package that I include in nearly every deck from Mad Titan's Shadow, Kalu, and White Tiger, from Cyclops, Beast, and from Black Widow, Rapid Response. That goes in nearly every leadership deck that I make, along with Ironheart and Power and All of Us from the Wasp Hero Pack. Those go in most decks that I make as well. The cards that are unique to the Guardian Cycle or to Guardian's decks are Groot, Rocket Raccoon, Booster Boots, Drax, Gamora, and Welcome Aboard, and of those, I would say Gamora is really the only really strong one. The others you can easily cut out, and that will cut the cost of this deck significantly, and also, well, the, the cards that are then included from Mad Titan Shadow, from Cyclops, from Black Widow, from Wasp, these are going to be included in a lot of decks, so you'll get a lot of use out of them. While you may not get much use out of Groot, Rocket, Raccoon, Booster Boots, Drax, or Welcome Aboard outside of this Leadership Star-Lord deck because there aren't really, there aren't many strong Guardian heroes. Most of the Guardian heroes are pretty weak, and aside from thematic reasons, you probably, probably won't play them that much. Star-Lord is a lot of fun, and he is strong. He's not overpowered. He's going to be probably lower down the S tier, maybe mid S tier. Uh, but he's not going to be a hero that's going to take on, like, Venom Goblin for you. Though he may be able to get Ronin on expert difficulty if he gets a good draw. So he's strong, he's a lot of fun, but he may be niche appeal in multiplayer because to play him in multiplayer, your team's got to be okay with his mechanics. He can create a lot of problems that your teammates then have to deal with. And some teams may be on board for that, and some teams may not. So the important cards in this deck, there really are no must-have cards outside of the standard leadership cards. The card that is not a Star-Lord specific card that's most important is Nowhere, but that comes included in the Star-Lord hero pack, and that's important because Star-Lord gives all allies the Guardian trait, and Nowhere draws a card when, a guardian tra uh, when an ally with the Guardian trait enters play. So you have to exhaust it so it's once per round. But that is included in the Star-Lord Hero Pack. You don't have to worry about picking that up separately. Star-Lord Ceiling, he's the best of the heroes that we've looked at so far, and he did exceed my expectations by quite a lot. And I enjoyed playing him a lot in this Hero Spotlight. He's a great hero to play solo. But he is limited in that he's not able to take on all the content, though we don't hold that against him because in my opinion there's really only one hero that can reliably take on all the content which is Spider-Ham. But he can take on a lot of content. There's a lot of things he can do 
and a lot of fun things that he can do. So he's a great fun hero. But for multiplayer, make sure your team is on board with his mechanics before you spend a lot of money picking up his deck. Because you may just spend money to build his deck only to troll slash annoy your teammates and depending on you know the nature of your team they may not be happy about that so that is star lord probably the most fun hero that i have spotlighted so far and the best hero Nova for me would be second. He's a lot of fun as well, but weaker than Star-Lord, in my opinion. And then we also have Scarlet Witch, Captain Marvel, and then Nebula would be the mini tier list of heroes in order of power from most to least of the heroes that I've spotlighted so far. Next up on our list will be SPDR, and thank you for watching.